watching Notes and Nine. Hello, and welcome to Notes and Nine. I'm David Leedy. Episode 171, Blue Mix Text-to-Speech. Another tool to tell me I didn't do it right. Okay, he's back. Yep, the one and only uh, Dr. Marky Roden uh, from Zomino.com. Uh, Marky is a, a, an X-Pages and jQuery expert. He's not a fashion expert, so let's just get that out of the way right now. Uh, but he's done tons of blog posts. on, on He's done a, an Angular series now. He's done a lot with uh, JavaScript, and he's obviously an X-Pages expert. He's an IBM champion working at a PSC Group, which is a consulting firm outside Chicago, and he's available for hire. Um, they've got a great X-Pages team. Uh, over there, I believe they got five IBM champions on staff, and they do other technologies as well. So if you do need help, uh, certainly uh, give them give them a ring, and I'm sure they'd be glad to help you. Uh, today's show is is not going to be on X pages. I think this is the second show in a row with with little to no X pages, and there's nothing wrong with that uh, because it's good to see what else is out there and, and learn new things. I'm a big fan of that. Uh, today uh, the demo is going to be on Blue Mix, and and Mark's going to come on and give us a, a demo on how to use Blue Mix to basically. I believe interact with Watson. I'm not sure if this is Watson or if it's, if it's another component, um, but it's basically going to allow you to type into the browser and and speech, and it'll come back to you and, and something you can play or, or even download as an audio file. Um, so you want to uh, check this out because I think it's a, it's a highly interesting and, uh, dare I say, entertaining. So with all that being said, uh, let's go right to the demo. Hi, my name is Mark Roden, and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to create a sample Bluemix application. To do this, you're going to have to go to www.bluemix.net and sign up for a free account. Once you've done that, you'll be able to follow all of the links that I'm going to use within today's video. They will be within the blog post on the Notes 9 website that is supporting this particular video. So recently, IBM announced five new IBM Watson services uh, that we're able to access and use through Bluemix. Uh, we have uh, text-based, visual recognition, some concepts and, and analytics. And what we're going to look at today is text-to-speech. If we look at text-to-speech, we can find all sorts of interesting information about what it does, how it works, and uh, there's documentation that supports that, that actually not only describes how it works, it gives you some insight into how you interact with it and how you make it work. And it also has a demo linked in there. To see a quick demo, click here. When we go over there, what we're able to do is we're able to actually type some text into a field and when we click speak this is what happens. Notes in 9 is the number one resource for this pages and domino community. We are all very grateful for Dave's dedication and leadership. If you see Dave, buy him a beer. And if you don't like it in a male voice, you can play it in a female voice. Notes in 9 is the number one resource for this pages and domino community. We are all very grateful for Dave's dedication and leadership. If you see Dave, buy him a beer. And what we're going to look at is how we can build our own version of this particular demo. So, further down within the documentation page, uh, we have the ability to create a sample application in Java or in JavaScript using Node.js. And why are we going to do it in JavaScript? Well, JavaScript is awesome! JavaScript is cool when you're part of a team. JavaScript is awesome when you're living the dreams. <laughs> so, because of that, obviously, we're going to do it in Node.js. Now, the example that they've given here in this particular documentation uses the Cloud Foundry command line. Um, and frankly, I think that is really for real developers like Ryan Baxter. And for the sake of uh, all of the other developers, specifically one who will remain nameless, we're not going to do it that way. And um, part of the reason I'm not going to do it that way is because I want to be able to show some of the other things that you can do with Bluemix and how it works. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to go to Bluemix and we're going to create an application by clicking on create an app. And when we create an app, what we're able to do is we're basically able to pick the kind of server and build pack runtime that we want for this application. We could do it in Java, we could do it in Node.js. We're going to pick Node.js. And when we do that, we're basically going to name Zomino text to speech dot bluemix.net. That's going to be the URL that is going to run my demo when we're finished. So what is happening in the background is that Bluemix is actually standing up a virtual machine in the cloud running on Ubuntu that is actually hosting my Node.js basic website at this particular point. And what's pretty amazing actually is how quickly it can actually get started and stand up. So we can see over here on the right hand side we have a heads up that it's starting, what's going on, we'll come back to that in a minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a service. By clicking on the add a service button we're going to have all sorts of different choices of all sorts of things that we can add. We can add data caching, we can add geocaching, uh, all sorts of other different things but what we're actually going to do today is we're going to add a Watson service uh, text to speech. And we're going to give that a name. And we're going to call it Zomino text to speech service so that I know what's going on so I don't get confused because oh, that did happen earlier. And we're going to add it to the Zomino text to speech service that we just created. So what that is doing is that's actually setting up a an instance within Watson of something that I can use within my particular application. Okay, so if we actually look over here and we show the credentials, we can actually see oh, it started restarting. So we'll let that get on with that. But you can actually see over here we've got this gateway.watson platform We've got a username and password that has automatically been created just for me, just so I can use this particular service. Well, that in itself is kind of cool. And we'll close that up so we don't need to see it. And my application is not running. We'll come back to it. Right. Well, there's nothing there yet anyway. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to add a source control service to this. So we're going to create a Git repository within the cloud. And I do have the choice of being able to populate this with a basic starter um, set of code. And I'm not going to do that. I am just going to build a blank repository for this point. Oh, and you can see in the back here that my application now got um, restarted. So, in real time, this is now creating a source control repository for me so that I am able to interact with it. If we actually go over here and we click on my Zomino text to speech, it says, Hello, we have a you know, basic application waiting for you to use. Okay, so we've now created our Git repository, and if I click on that, we can see what's going on over there. So within my Git repository, two files have been created, this license.txt and this readme.md. All right, well, that in itself is not much use. So I'm going to get my Git URL. And within WebStorm, I'm actually going to clone a new version of this. I'm going to put it in text to speech. And I wait for that to download, and when it's downloaded all of the files, I'll be able to interact with them locally. Yep. So I now have two files. Woo. Okay. Going back to our documentation, what it does tell you to do is it tells you to download the application from this ts node.js sample.zip. So I'm going to download that. I'm going to open that. 
and this is going to give me the uh, files that are built into this example that we're looking at. I'm going to take all of those, I'm going to copy them, back over in WebStorm I'm going to open this folder in Windows Explorer, text-to-speech, and in there I'm going to paste all of those files. And don't care about the README. Alright, so going back over here, we now have a whole bunch of files. But you will see that they're in red. I have to make sure that I add them to my Git repository. And then any changes that I make to them will be added to the Git repository when I push it back up into the cloud. So, within Bluemix, what makes the whole thing work is this manifest.yml file. So basically it when the whole thing runs up and starts, it basically says what services do you want, what is the name of your site, how does it run, and it runs basically by starting app.js within node and how much memory do you want. I don't want that much memory. Eh? Um, so the services, if you remember, going back to uh, Bluemix, my service is called Zomino Text to Speech Service. Okay, there's, our, there's my name. So I'm going to copy that. So that's what my service is called. And the name of my application is actually Zomino Text to Speech. So those are the changes that I am going to make. I'm going to save that. When the application runs, it's going to run app.js. This is um, some server side JavaScript node. No, JS code that basically runs the example. And I'm not going to go into how it works today, but just know that when it loads up in Bluemix, this is the file that is going to run that is my Node.js server application when it starts. Okay, so within WebStorm, I am going to commit all of these changes. And uh, as well as committing them, I'm actually going to push them up to Bluemix because that's where it came from. Now it's doing a whole bunch of error checking, which I should have turned off, but that's okay. And it's going to come back and it's going to go, oh, there's a whole bunch of errors and what have you. That's mostly to do with JavaScript semantics and things like that, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to keep going anyway. It, it still works. Right. And I am going to push this up to Bluemix. And so with it so basically at this point WebStorm is acting as my source control uh, interface. And right, so everything has now been pushed successfully up to Bluemix. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna go back into my application. Uh, I'm gonna look at so if I now refresh my source control within the cloud, we'll be able to see all the files that just got pushed back up there. And if I go over here and I look at build and deploy, what that basically does is that allows you to automatically build and deploy your application up into Bluemix. So I've pushed the files up now, but it's not running. So I'm going to request a build. And if we look at the logs of the build, and basically doesn't show you a whole lot at this point. Well, it was requested by me. It's carrying on. It's doing so oh there we go. So there we go. So we've got a log and the build was successful. Oh, okay. Right. Now it's going on with the deployment. So if I open up the log on the history, what you can actually see here, and it it doesn't mean a whole lot to me, I've got to tell you, but so we can see that it's deploying uh, on Ubuntu. Um, it's it stopped the existing application. And as this is going through and doing the build, what you will see is that it's now starting the application. Now, 
my files in here within Node, they've got a whole bunch of um, Node dependencies that need to be updated and deployed onto the server. So it's really kind of cool. You can actually, by looking at this, you can see how it begins to build and deploy the application in the cloud. It downloaded all of the dependencies within Node. These are all of the files that Node says I need to run this application. Bluemix in the cloud automatically downloaded all of those files and put them onto the server for you so that it can run your application. It's really kind of cool. Now you are able to do this locally as well. So ultimately what we're going to do is we'll be able to develop locally with a node server locally and then push to the cloud when it's ready. So uh, I think this may be ready. If we go back over here and we look at our application you can see that the activity log says that it stopped it carried on, continued what it was doing, and our app is running. So if we now take a look at our example app, this is our new app within Bluemix and it works. And that's basically it. So within the space of about 10 minutes, we have been able to go from no application at all. We've been able to follow the IBM documentation. Yeah, we changed it a little bit around the edges just to make it a little bit easier and I think kind of cool to see what's going on. But we have been able to deploy an application very quickly and that's how easy it is to get up and running with a sample Bluemix application. JavaScript is awesome. Yes, it is. And there you go. So in a future Notes in 9, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can take this sample and then integrate it into an XPages application. Thank you very much. My name is Mark Roden. You can find uh, more information about me on my blog, www.zomino.com. Thank you very much. JavaScript is us. Oh, wait. <laughs> it's upside down. <laughs> And that well, that's that's not quite the demo. I I that that's such a good demo, Mark, and I, I thank you for that. I wanted to at least give give it a shot and play with it myself. So here's uh what I came up with. Doctor Marky Roden, the smartest guy in the local pub, an epic loser of the notes in nine Java versus JavaScript throwdown, continues to espouse all things JavaScript. While JavaScript has its place, always remember that it is just one tool in your toolbox. The more you learn, the more you can build learn, code, share. And that's my stab at uh, text-to-speech. Uh, if you have any questions for me, uh, here's my contact information, and I thank you for your time.